In this video, we're going to um, review the 2018 free response question number four. Um, and the main thing that I want you to focus on, uh, obviously, is getting the question right. But the most important thing, as we've talked about a great deal in class, is reading the question. Because if you can read it and you can access the math that they're looking for, you will be successful. So let's take a look at question number four. Let's look at the prompt. The height of a tree at a time t is given by a differentiable function h, where h of t is measured in meters, and t is measured in years. Selected values of h of t are given in the table above. So remember that h of t is the height of a tree. So you, uh, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to write with this thing. I'm trying something a little bit different. But you want to make sure that you know, I'm not going to even going to try to, well, maybe I am. I'm not giving up easily. So uh, H of T is the height of the tree. I will not be doing a lot of writing, I assure you. I'm just playing around with this uh, thing. That is the height of the tree, and it is measured in meters. Letter A, use the data in the table to estimate h prime of 6. This is a really, really easy question. We are estimating an instant rate, and so we know that when we're estimating an instant rate, we're going to do that, and we want to uh, do it, the instant rate at 6. So we're going to go one data value below. We're going to go one data value above, and we're going to do the average rate of change, change in y over change in x. And then the second thing they want us to do, something that we're really good at, is interpreting the meaning of the derivative, which is h prime of x in the context of the problem. All right, so let's come down here and let's take a look at my answer for letter A. So in letter A, h prime of 6 is approximately 11 minus 6 my, uh, over 7 minus 5. And this difference quotient that you see right here is absolutely required. It has to be seen in order to get the answer. You really don't have to reduce that. You can leave it along with the units, meters per year. You do not have to get the 5 over 2. I want to keep reiterating that, that you do not have to simplify. And then when I'm interpreting, I notice that the instant rate, of, approximated instant rate of change is positive. So we're going to use our sentence frame that we always use. At six years, the height of the tree, it's the height of the tree that's changing. A derivative modifies its preceding function. So h prime is meters per year. So we're modifying meters, which is the height of the tree. So the height of the tree measured in meters is increasing at a rate of 5 over 2 meters per year because the derivative h prime of 6 is greater than 0. Now, as we have talked about multiple times in class, this part does not have to be there and you can still get full credit. So if you look at the scoring guide, let's take a look at the next page. Let me just get rid of this completely. I don't think I need to cover that up. Now, let's do this. So the points there are one point for the estimate. You can see that right here. Um, and again, that requires that you have the difference quotient and then the correct interpretation with units. Letter B. In letter B, we are going to explain why there must be at least one time. So as soon as you see that must be at least one time, we're launching into a theorem, more than likely, and it says that this is going to happen, so you really can't state that it's not going to happen, that the instant rate or the derivative is equal to 2. Now, since the derivative is not equal to 0, we know it's not Rolle's theorem, so it has to be mean value theorem. And in the mean value theorem, we know that you're going to study the conditions. We must have a function that's continuous on a closed interval and it must be differentiable on the open interval. And we see in the prompt that we have a twice differentiable function. That just means that h has a first and a second derivative. 
So if h has a first derivative, it is differentiable. Therefore, h is continuous, so the conditions of the mean value theorem are met. So we're going from 2 to 10. So all we're going to uh, show is that the average rate from 10 to 2, change in y over change in x, so now we're going from 10 to 2, we're going to show that that is equal to 2. And so when we look down here at my work for letter B, I start by stating the condition of the theorem. H of t is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. And then I go and explain my reason. Did I grab the wrong numbers there? Hold on just a second. I think I, from 2, oh, somewhere in the interval from 2 to 10. So it doesn't have to be that the average rate of change uh, from 2 to 10 has to equal to 2. The average rate of change somewhere in that interval has to be. So I, I think that was a little bit misleading on my part. So anywhere on the interval from 2 to 10, we're looking for the average rate of change to equal to 2. So you can check out um, any pair from 2 to 10. And so if you um, look at 5 and 3, so from 3 to 5, let me get my pen here. So from 3 to 5, the average rate of change, 6 minus 2 over 5 minus 3, is equal to the instant rate of change. Um, so again, it does not have to happen from 2 to 10, per se, it has to happen somewhere between 2 and 10. So in my work, the, I uh, show the average rate of change is equal to 2, and therefore, you, by the mean value theorem, h prime of t must equal to 2 within that interval. You do not have to quote by the mean value theorem. Let's take a look at the scoring guide. So for this problem in the scoring guide, um, now remember this is the scoring guide. It's not the perfect exact, the, exactly the way a student would necessarily write their answer. Uh, but they did what I did. They're showing that the average rate of change on one of those intervals from 2 to 10 is equal to 2. And then here they're stating their conditions um, of the mean value theorem. So there's one point for finding the right interval, and there's one point for conclusion using mean value theorem, but again, you don't have to say mean value theorem. You're, now this problem does, but you don't have to say the mean value, you don't have to say words mean value theorem. Everything that happened up here, if you put that, that average rate of change and you put the conditions in there, the whole thing, and this is getting a little sloppy, sorry about that, um, is the mean value theorem. Let's go back to letter C, and let's get a different color. So in letter C, they're being very direct with us. We are to use the trapezoidal sum with four subintervals. Remember, trap when you're using trapezoids or Riemann sums, you just got to be careful um, about equal or unequal subintervals, and I don't think the data above is equal subintervals. We're going to approximate, now here's another key word, average height. Remember that we're going to insert the word average value of the height. Sorry about the writing. I'm writing with a mouse on a laptop, so it's not going great. The average value of the height. So we're going from 2 to 10, so there's my A and my B. So I'm going to do 1 over B minus A. So let's look at my work down here. 1 over B minus A, or 10 minus 2. Integral from 2 to 10. Notice I'm showing the calculus that I'm doing right here. I'm showing that I definitely am doing a, no pun intended, a definite integral. So I have the 1 8 That is my uh, 1 over B minus A. The area formula for a trapezoid, there's my common one-half, because all of the trapezoids will have a half, or you can put the half in. And then I'm showing height, sum of the bases. 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 
notice I am not cleaning that up. I'm not going to come. I'm not going to combine. I'm not going to add. I'm not going to multiply. I'm not going to divide because that answer will get full 100% credit. Looking at the scoring guide on that. Um, slide that down. Now they did simplify it, but I promise, promise, promise you do not have to simplify it, and I don't want you to. I do need to see the trapezoidal setup. I have to be able to see that you use trapezoids. And then um, your final answer has to include the 1 8. So the trapezoidal point does not include the 1 8. It just includes um, everything else. So that whole thing will be your final answer. And then in part D, the height of the tree in meters can be modeled by a function. So now they're, they're making g of x into a function instead of a table. x is the diameter of the base of the tree. When the tree is 50 meters tall, when h is 50, the diameter of the tree is increasing at a rate. So remember, the height of the, the diameter of the tree is measured by x. And now they're telling me that the diameter rate, so that is dx dt. So we're launching into a related rate. It's not a hard related rate. Do not, under any circumstances, give up. You persevere, persevere, persevere. According to this model, what is the rate of change of the height of the tree? So we want gx g. Uh, g of x, or g, x, g, t, sorry about that, when the tree is 50 meters tall. And let's look at my work down here. So I recorded all my information, just like we always do. When, when the height of the tree is 50, dx, dt is increasing at a rate, 0 0.03 meters per year, sec, year. find d, g, d, t. So since the function is a quotient, I'm going to use the quotient rule down d up, there's my chain rule, minus up d down, there's my dx dt over down down. Now to find the value of x, we have to set the function equal to 50. That's the little catch on this particular problem. So right over here, I'm going to need that x value in order to evaluate this. So I have to set the height of the tree, 50, equal to the function, cross multiply, solve for x, x is equal to 1, Substitute in the 1 and do not simplify. Leave it just like it is, just like you see it right here for a full credit answer. However, I noticed I didn't put the units and you should have put the units. The scoring guide, if we look at that real quickly. Um... They do the same thing that I do, the chain rule. Um, they simplify it all the way out to be 3 fourths, which you do not, do not, do not, do not have to do. Um, and even though I didn't put units, fortunately, if you look at the scoring guide, there are two points for finding the derivative of g of x and using that implicit differentiation and getting the dx dt's, and one point for the answer, and it does not have to be simplified, promise, promise. If you do not do the chain rule, the most you can get is one point. If you have no chain rule, if you don't have the dx dt, where you're supposed to have dx dt. So that's problem number one. Um, come back and check out problem number, um, that's problem number four. Come back and check out problem five.